I'm going to introduce this book by Emil Durkheim, The Elementary Forms of the Religious Life. So Durkheim was interested in uh, religion's socially useful role, the way religion integrates people, it brings us together. And Durkheim's view is really useful to think about in relation to COVID, uh, where there's evidence that people are turning to religion to religious services particularly during lockdown. Now Durkheim was a French sociologist born in 1858. He uh, wrote about how society structures shaped religious beliefs and practices. Uh, but it wasn't a one-way process. Durkheim believed that beliefs could also influence uh, society. So this is his key book uh, published in 1912 when he was in his 50s. He wasn't really interested in the origin of religion, um, but he did believe looking to pre-industrial societies um, would be useful to understand how the kind of basic elementary uh, ideas at the root of religion worked. So what is his central argument? Well, he argues that religion is an eminently social thing. Now, he wasn't religious himself. He didn't accept academic definitions that saw uh, religion as belief in the supernatural or a higher power. Um, but it doesn't mean that he thought religion was false or was useless. Religions, um, which are systems that include rights um, and beliefs, they play a vital part in social life uh, because, he said, they're grounded in and they express the real. And religion binds people together. Now, a um, bit of context, uh, Durkheim had already written the book uh, Suicide in 1897, where um, he uh, argued that Catholics had lower suicide rates uh, because Catholics had strong social ties, uh, which meant that people were less isolated and felt less hopeless. He also said that religion um, helps prevent suicide by uh, giving people a reason for living. It wards off the alienation um, that causes suicide. Um, but back to his arguments about religion, which um, kind of related, again, the social role of religion. So in this book, uh, Elementary Forms, Durkheim notes that religions commonly distinguish between two categories, sacred and profane. So that for him is religion's key feature. And that division into sacred and profane that, you know, is very familiar to us um, nowadays ha has influenced um, other, many other writers, including anthropologists, um, Claude Levi Strauss, Mary Douglas, um, and people may not know th th about its roots in, um, in Durkheim's work. So, uh, religion binds together um, its adherents into a group who share a faith or life. So, if religion's first main characteristic is this sacred profane division, then its second is that it is collective, it's not individual. So, bringing these together into a, into a single definition, Durkheim proposed, um, and I'll quote his famous definition now, uh, which is, a religion is a unified system of beliefs and practices relative to sacred things. That is to say, things set apart and forbidden. Beliefs and practices which unite into one single moral community called a church, all those who adhere to them. Now, he used the word church, um, he meant it to, or he would have meant it to apply to other religions too. So he uses examples um, from Australian uh, indigenous religion throughout his book. Um, he talks about the totem that guided Aboriginal life. So totem being uh, a representation of a plant or an animal that's considered sacred. Um, but he says the totem isn't holy in its own right, it's just an object, it's a symbol. It represents something else. It's that outward form of something that's considered divine, which he called the totemic principle or God. Um, and second, it is the symbol of the clan or society. It's their mark of identity. And then he wondered, well, maybe those two things are connected. He argued that the God um, or the totem and the society were basically one. 
So the totemic principle is the group itself, personified, represented to the imagination under the visible form of the animal or vegetable which serves as the totem. And symbols that groups use today, so for example flags at national parades, are, are not intrinsically sacred. They are sacred only because members of their society accord sacredness to them. But a question um, for Durkheim, I think, remains. So if, if religion is a creation of society, why does society feel it needs religion? Well, Durkheim uh, thought that people were reacting to the frustration uh, they felt living in a hierarchical society. We're used to deferring to authority figures, leaders, um, monarchs, um, political leaders in the COVID situation, particularly at the moment, who are trying to advise us to stay in our homes or whatever. So it's easy to assume there's a higher force lying behind these power structures. So they invent a divine figure. Now, if you're religious, you might think, well, these ideas sound quite anti-religious. Um, but Durkheim did see the value of religion. He saw that the sense of spiritual power um, that comes from acting together can lead us to great things. Um, what he called a collective effervescence inspires us to, um, to act. So, for Durkheim, however inspiring and socially useful religion is, its source is only society's own thoughts and ideals. But this doesn't mean we should try and get rid of religion. He was right in thinking that that's impossible. Religion will transform rather than disappear. Um, and reading the end of his book, thinking about the current um, pandemic, uh, and the way religion seems to be uh, bringing people together. I think this is quite interesting. So he says, there is something eternal in religion that is destined to outlive the succession of particular symbols in which religious thought has clothed itself. There can be no society that does not experience the need at regular intervals to maintain and strengthen the collective feelings and ideas that provide its coherence and its distinct individuality. This moral remaking can be achieved only through meetings, assemblies and congregations in which the individuals pressing close to one another reaffirm in common their common sentiments. Now, um, of course, we may be pressing close to one another behind our screens rather than at places of worship, but, but I think he is right. Religion is designed, um, is destined rather, to transform itself rather than to disappear.